Welcome to episode number seven of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your host, Paul Ames, and on the show today, guys, we've got probably one of the most inspiring entrepreneurs on the planet, Grant Cardone. Grant is an internationally renowned business and sales expert. He's a leading sales trainer throughout the world, and he is the author of now seven books and a New York Times bestseller. His newest book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, is already number one on Amazon without even being launched. Today is the actual launch date of it. So guys, he shares his incredible knowledge and incredible experiences of how you can be obsessed and stand out in the pack and stop being average in your life and in your career. So guys, if you really love the content that we've been sharing, please subscribe to my channel, like it or share it with your friends. That would be great. I can't wait to get you guys into this episode. So let's get started. Welcome to episode number seven of the Career Breakthrough Series. On the show today, we've got... Number seven, man. Yeah. Number seven's one of my favorite numbers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's a special number just for you, man. Thank you. And uh, on the show today, we've got a super inspiring guest, Grant Cardone. He's an international sales training expert, a New York Times bestselling author, and now the author of seven incredible books. The new one coming out, it's actually just been launched today, Be Obsessed or Be Average. Now, Grant's got an incredible special, and I think today's the last day you guys can get on board with this amazing bonus that he's got with his book. So for today only, um, you can get 13-week coaching program, which is going to help you step-by-step step how to implement everything in the book that he's showing you. And that's only for today. So what you guys need to do is get on board right now and jump on grantcardone.com forward slash obsessed. Yeah, and Paul, let me just do this before we get into it, just so it's not just for right now for, for people that, that maybe that don't have time to hook up or they do it tomorrow or the next day, whatever. If you just send a receipt, send me a receipt that you bought the book from wherever you bought it from, where, where, whatever bookstore, wherever, it doesn't matter to me. Send a receipt to obsessed at grantcardone.com and I'll get you, I'll get them uh, involved in the program. Number one, you got a t big time change. Number two, some of your audience may may have never heard of me and be like, "Well, I don't, I don't, I got to do some due diligence on this dude first. Yeah. <laughs> but but I just want to make it available to them. So what we've done is give thirteen coaching sessions. They're going to start next week on the thirteenth, okay. or is that the when is the thirteenth? In a couple of days. Yep. The first one will be the thirteenth, but basically, I'm just going to tell everybody. Over the next, uh, we, we promised 13 weeks. I'm going to actually do 14 weeks. So next week, I'll just get everybody in, kind of set it up, show them how, so that people have enough time to read the book, look at it. And then each each week, I'll actually go over a chapter in the book. And the reason I'm doing this is not just to make sure people buy the book, but to make sure people understand the book and use the material because i truly believe of all the books and programs i've ever done i believe this book is a game changer for for what people need to to go to the next real level in in their business and in their life, lives that's perfect guys and i can vouch for that i've got gone through all of grant's uh audio programs i bought the whole set of them and they're absolutely amazing they're game changing guys and i've also pre-ordered the copy of the book so i strongly suggest you jump on board and get on inside uh, get on board with that link so grant thank you so much for being on the show again um obviously i'd just like to get a bit of a history and a bit of background on what sort of positive and negative influences you had basically on your career or growing up as a child well, well, I, I grew up in a middle class family. I don't, I don't have any deep, terrible tragedies early in my life. You know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't get in a car wreck and die and then come back. I don't, I don't have those stories. I grew up in a middle fa class family. My, my parents both treated me with love and care and, and, and provided us with a, a, a good upbringing. And my dad died when I was ten. You know, I, that was pretty. That was pretty traumatic to me. And I lost an older brother when I was twenty. But in between those. 10 and 20, I, I don't know if things would have been different had I not had those two losses in my life. I, I don't think they would have actually been any different. What, what happened to me was at, at the age of 15 or 16 years old, I started going downhill in my life. I don't know if it was the loss of my dad, if it was education, if it was, if it was people telling me I couldn't have what I wanted. But I tend to believe, I want to believe after years of looking, I'm 50, 58 years old now, and I've been like taking, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly aware person. I've been always, I've always been interested in my own personal self development. I've always thought I had more potential than I was delivering. Then, when I was 10 years old, and even today, I've always thought I could do, 
to do more than I was doing. So when I was a kid, man, I was like, I had dreams of doing crazy, great stuff. And as I grew up, I had more and more people telling me, hey, man, just be satisfied where you are. You know, don't have big expectations. Uh, the less your expectations, the less your disappointments. We love you just the way you are. Now, these are people close to me. Like, this this is people that care about me, right? Yeah, definitely. So imagine what the people are saying that don't want me to do well. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And, and I actually talk about this in the book. Imagine how many people are around you that love and care for you that are giving you messages compared to the few that hate you. Yeah. The, the, there's only a few people that hate you. Okay, that, that's not the people stopping you. It's I actually talk about this in two chapters that the naysayers in your life are more dangerous than the haters. Exactly. Now, now, most people don't have haters because most people don't ever get successful enough to have them. That's okay, true. you literally won't you will not have people that hate on another person. Have something that the person that, that is generating the hate wants. Yeah. Nobody's ever hated on me. Because I didn't have something they wanted. So, so that, that, that's typically not a problem. The person doesn't want the, – the government doesn't want me to do well maybe because I'm growing so fast. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter really where the hate's coming from. It could be a group. It could be a politician. It could be an individual. It could be another company. People get bad reviews written on their company all the time. When? Not, not when they're not successful. It's when they become successful and become a threat. Yep. But before that, before that, okay, and th this really goes back to where my my life, this is my 19th business program wow. that I've written, my Amazing. seventh book. This is what has held me down my entire life. If people ask me, hey, what's one thing? Hey, the one thing is this, the people close to you in your life that love you, that care for you, that want the best for you could be the worst influence on you. Definitely. And. And, and that doesn't mean those people don't love you, man. It, it, it just means like my mom was one of those people. My mom, my mom told me not to start every business that I started. Yep. OK. And now pa fast forward 30 or 40 years and she's like, man, I always knew you were going to do good. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Well, you were the one that said not to do this, man. Yeah. You, you're the one, that, you know. So so I, I think that that that. Um, Look, I'm not a special person, but I think I am a special person. OK, Definitely. And, and I say that I say that I say that to mean two things. I've always thought I was special, yeah. but but I, I think everybody's special. So that means that I'm not really special, except if you don't think you're special, then you're not going to do special things. No, it's all definitely all within you. It's in your self-belief. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's funny how you said that about, um, yeah, the power of the influence of others and how, how much that can make such a massive impact on your life. And I myself am exactly the same. I've gone through when I wanted to start my business, it was the same sort of thing. Everyone's saying, what do you want to do counseling for? You've come from a manual labor background. You're not suited to that. But I absolutely love it. And they couldn't understand that. Now they're kind of like, Oh well, it's it's good to see you know doing well and you love what you're doing yeah. and, and you're like yeah. you didn't believe before. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, and and that's where it all went bad for me, dude. I, I I've had obsessions, yeah. okay, not not in the negative connotation, yeah. because you see if you look at if you look up the word obsessed in the dictionary, it all suggests that it's something dark and evil and terrible and out of control. You know, look, I I've had obsessions my whole life. I've never met anybody that didn't have some kind of a <clears throat> addictive quality, the ability to, to, to drop into something and become so consumed with it exactly. that, that you can't sleep, you don't want to eat, okay, you don't need to eat, that you don't even know where time goes, yep. right? Those are beautiful moments, yet, yet our society, all the way from Miami all the way to Perth, our society has tainted that and made it wrong. Yeah. That all obsessions are about, oh, I'm obsessed with the wrong girl or the girl's obsessed with me or I'm obsessed with drugs or pornography or whatever it is that you're you're infatuated with that's nonproductive. Yeah. But on the other hand, and so everybody assumes being obsessed is negative. And that's why I wrote the book. The, the, the publisher didn't want to use this title. Yeah. They're like, obsessed is bad. <laughs> I said, we're going to give people permission approval and i'm going to change the way my goal of this book is to change the way people think about obsession because i think that without obsession no one can truly be successful
No. And I absolutely so, love that title. That's brilliant. And it, it's so yeah. true. You know, people look at the negative side of things. They don't look at the positive side of the, uh, the obsession. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Grant. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, what, going back to some of your previous careers, I know I've, I've heard a lot. I listen to your podcasts every day and I listen to your uh, audio books a lot. And I know you've said you've done a, very, a variety of different careers in the past. So what would you say would be some of your biggest learnings and biggest takeaways from your previous careers that you've done? Uh, don't go small, man. Yep. Like it's not even worth the energy. You know, I was having a negotiation with a guy yesterday and I said, look, dude, if this business, this business, this particular business is doing about, uh, it'll do about 20 million bucks this year. And, uh, I said, if I can't get this company to do 50 million bucks next year, I'm gonna drop it. Yep. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Hey, no, listen to me, man. If this company does not do this division, doesn't do 50 million. I'm going to throw it away. Yeah. And, and that's what I would tell people. Look, it's work. It doesn't matter whether it's going to the grocery store or whether it's going on the biggest vacation of your life. Same amount of effort. Yeah, definitely. So, so if you're going to put the, pack the kids up, okay, and, and, and drag them across the country for a trip or, or across the city for a trip, okay, dude, it's, it's all ugly. OK, yeah. it's ugly, man. It's a lot of work. So if, if you're going to go stay at the Holiday Inn, the local Holiday Inn at, at forty nine dollars and eat the breakfast in the morning, if you're going to go and it's going to be work, go stay at a Four season. Don't get breakfast free. Hang around some other people that could actually grow and blow your business up. So I would just tell people most of my upbringing actually stunted my growth. OK, I should have been thinking enormous like I was when I was a child. And, and, and because everything else is work, man, coming up short is work. So, so I, you know, you're either going to be obsessed with success or you're going to be obsessed with what's left over. Yeah, that's right. And, and that's the bottom line, dude. Every human being on this planet today, whether they know it or not, you're obsessed with something, whether it's going to the grocery store. No, we can't buy that. You know, no, I don't have time for my wife. No, I don't have time for the kids. I woke up at six o'clock this morning so I could go teach my kid, work with my kid riding a bike. I'll never get to do this again, man. OK, excuses do not help me. So until the individual owns their obsessions, I'm obsessed at being a good obsessions, a great father. I want to be a great father. I want to be a great husband. I need to be a great father to two kids. And then I need to get to my office and be a father to millions of people. That's true. Yeah. So. So, so, dude, until until people own their obsession, because if I don't do that, then I'm going to be obsessed in my life with how little I did rather than or my excuse is why I didn't or somebody wrecks my car and I got to fix it. And now I'm like, man, I can't believe you freaking twenty two hundred dollars worth of damage on my car and you don't have insurance. What am I obsessing with? I'm obsessing with something out of my control. He didn't have insurance. I'm stuck with the bill when the truth is. I should be obsessed with enormous things right now, not $2,200 worth of damage. If that's all it takes to ruin your life, dude, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're screwed. Yeah. You're a screwed individual, okay? Or what we call in this book is your average. Yeah. And basically, I know this is a hard message for people to hear. It's an extremely grating message for anybody that's accept, accepted where they are in life. They'll, they'll, they'll probably turn me off at this point right here. But if you're not obsessed, you're average. And if you're average, just think about what that means. Would you tell your kids, yeah, I'm an average dad. I'm an average employee. I'm an average husband. Okay. I'm an average producer. I'm an average dreamer. I have an average life. I'm taking up average space on an average planet. Hmm. Who wants to say that, man? Can you imagine wow. advertising that to your customers? Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't go down very well at all. Well, nobody's going to come, dude. No. But but notice how many people have accepted it is all right. Exactly. It's become, and, and it's then become some the people, norm. Some of your, yeah. yeah, some of your listeners will say, but I don't need all that stuff. I don't need the plane. I don't need the fame. I don't need the money. And what, what I'm going to show you in this book is, yes, you do. You're wrong that you don't need those things. If you want to make a difference on this planet, OK, if you want to be a great example to your community, your church and your kids, OK, if you want to change politics on this planet, if you want to change the economy on this planet, if you're sick and tired of being taken advantage of, do you better get obsessed? You better not be average. Otherwise, you're going to be punished and you're going to be treated like average people are. Yep. 
And, and so that, that that's really what I'm doing in the, the book is like, dude, you got to say no to average. You got to throw yourself all in. We know you're capable of doing it. I can find a point in your life when you were completely consumed with something. And you didn't know about time. You didn't know about money. You didn't care about food. You literally became so energized that you're like, I can't believe it's one o'clock in the morning, man. What happened? I didn't even know. I didn't even know the sun went down. What happened? <laughs> right? That's that's spot on. And I, I think uh, you've hit the nail on the head. That's so true. So many people just don't even know what their potential is. I mean, obviously with myself and my career counseling business, like a lot of people come to me and they just have no clue what their potential is. They don't strive for it. They've got no clarity and they just got no goals, no way of moving forward. And so, yeah, as you said, so many people just settle for average. That, that's the norm. That's what's been accepted when, you know, you, you've got, you're no different to anyone else on the planet. Everyone started off with the same, but it's how you think and how much action you take that's why yeah obviously your 10x rule book has made a massive difference in my life and you know i think it's the thing yeah a lot of people just don't take enough action and get clarity on what they want well dude why why would you why would you if 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 being obsessed is a bad thing yeah see true. see why why would you when you sat when you were six in the sixth grade you're 12 years old sitting in the sixth grade and, and your teacher's telling you don't move Sit in that chair and don't do anything. I mean, we've gotten so many messages about don't move. Your dad says, sit in the back seat and don't say another word. Yeah. Dude, this is one time I'm saying that message. You heard it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. You know, hey, you're too jittery. You know, you're too active. You're 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 an overachiever. OK, what you're too fast. Slow down like constant messages about be something else all the way to the point. Fast forward to the 21st century. You're ADD, ADHD, COPD, COD, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, dude, I've been called all that stuff. And by the way, we got a pill for you. If that pill doesn't work, we got a combination for you. You got kids in America. Ten million kids last year were put on Ritalin. OK, 10 million kids below the age of 12 years old were put on a pill because they're overactive. That's a joke. You know, so 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 I'm like, look, I've been I've been pres prescribed lithium for my problems. I've been called bipolar, bipolar. What you talking about? ADD, <laughs> attention deficit. I said, I got 16 files open in my head right now. While you and I do this interview, Paul, while we do this interview, you're in Perth. I'm in Miami. I have at least at least 16 other things that I'm thinking about while I deliver this message. I don't know what your next question is going to be, yep. <laughs> but I know as a business person, I got this negotiation that's going bad right now. I got a piece of real estate that I got to get debt on in 10 days. I'm worried about the, 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 the I'll just show you the stuff that's going on for me. I'm worried about what treasury bills are doing this morning because it's $36 million worth of debt. And every time that treasury goes up a little bit, it costs me money. I'm thinking about a, a property management deal. I'm working out with somebody to run 4,000 apartments for me. I got a book release dropping today. Yeah. I got a website that's got a bunch of freaking out points that I need people to be able to go to. I got this big promotion I'm doing tonight. I got dinner with the uh, the wife. My kid wants to ride the bike again. You see what I'm saying, dude? Oh, man. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. And, and that's probably not everything. Like, if I really look, I'm like, oh, wow, how am I doing as a spiritual being? Yep. You know? How am I doing? I got Robert shooting pictures of me right now. I got John. Hey, are we getting the recording? So like the individual, what I'm what I want to give people permission to do is look, man, there's a lot of going on and you can handle all of it. Definitely. Right. And and it doesn't mean I'm ADD. I, I don't have an attention deficit disorder. I'm, I'm a freaking genius, just like you are. Yeah. And, and I need to be obsessed with t tapping into all that 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 I can observe around me. That's brilliant. Not, 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 not be limited to doing one thing, dude. It, this is why people are dying. People are dying, but it takes about 60 years for them to make it official. Yeah. But they're dying because there's only one activity. Yeah. You know, I don't want to do one thing. I don't have one purpose. No. People are like, hey, me what's neither. the next thing for you? There is no next thing for me, man. There's, there's life. You know, I'm living my life and it comes it comes with good stuff, bad stuff. It comes with an adventure. Right. So, that's true. yeah, that's uh, that's brilliant advice. Thanks for sharing that, Grant. Oh, th thank you.
Um, I wouldn't so, share it. Didn't, you didn't have me on your show, dude. <laughs> exactly right. Um, so, Grant, um, so what's some of the biggest things that you're most excited about your business moving forward? What's some of the big, big things going on that you're most that's got you lit up inside? Well, I mean, number one is helping people, man. I, I, I don't, I definitely don't write books to, to, to make money. Okay, books don't make money. Just so anybody out there wants to make money on a book, books, by the way, are not calling cards. I know a lot of people say, oh, books are calling cards. It's a, it's a, it, 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 no, they're not. Okay. Most people don't even ever pick up somebody's book. Yeah. So, so I am intrigued by challenge. I, I don't know what the next challenge is. I could tell you one of them is to take our real estate portfolio. We're, we're gonna, I'm probably going to take that company public and go from four or five hundred million dollars to four billion. Wow. But, but more, more important than that, dude, is I'm interested in challenges, even little challenges like, how, how, why is this book number one on Amazon right now? Number one, number three, and number five on Amazon, and the book's not even out. Yeah. Every other book that I'm competing with has already been out for at least three or four weeks. Exactly. So, and, and two books, two books are one tenth of the price of my book. This book's seventeen book dollars. They got the number two book or, or number two, yeah, t- number two book is like I don't know dollar. This is basically free. So how can I be a number one on Amazon right now and nobody even has the book? See, that's an interesting challenge to me. The way the Internet's spinning and changing right now, the ability to reach Perth today or to reach uh, South Korea or Bogota, Colombia, you know, or to, to reach into third world countries and start influencing people about money. I recently wrote a book I've written uh, this year. We've written four different business programs this year. I wrote a book called The Millionaire Booklet right here. This book was translated to 38 languages within 60 days of the day I started it. Wow, that's incredible. So I, start, I started the book. 30 days later, I finished the book. 30 days after that, it had already been translated to 38 languages. There's only 50 books on the planet that have been translated this many times. We did it in 60 days. Wow. Okay. Now, now, the point of that is this. I did this to prove that doesn't have to take 19 months. That book took 19 months to produce. This took uh, 30 days. Wow. So, so, so I'm interested in changing things, right? I'm not just interested in money. OK, uh, ye- yesterday, for instance, we had two people from Germany visit our website and they bought a dollar fifty. They bought a product that was a dollar fifty. Yep. We had we had five thousand percent increase over the weekend at my Internet site and my website. OK, now th- my, my, my staff is saying, why are you so interested in that three dollars? I'm like, dude, that's German money, man. <laughs> OK, more importantly, that's two people in Germany. I don't know yet. Exactly. Okay, I reached two people in Germany, and we're we're we, we're just we just moved we just got our book in German. That's exciting. So, so it's very exciting for me, right? Because can I reach two hundred? Can I reach two thousand? Can I reach twenty thousand? Could I reach the school systems on this planet and start infiltrating the schools with information so a kid doesn't have to go to school for twelve years, man? Yep. Like, like, why would we ever have a child? spend 12 years going to school to get out and basically know nothing exactly it's uh it doesn't make sense does it yeah so i'd like to change that so when you ask me what are the challenges there's a whole bunch of them bro mostly which is i'm obsessed with is hey can i can i experience my potential yeah what would you say would be the best career advice that you've ever seen uh, ever received um whether that be from a book or in person, what, what would you think would be the best career advice you've ever received in your life? Pro- probably the best, the best career advice I was ever given was from my mother, who was not educated, uh, never really held a job. And, and uh, she was a mother, right? She, that, that was her job. Her job was to be a mother. Yep. And she was a great mother, great mother. And, and she told me uh, once, she says, hey, the best investment you can ever make is in yourself. She's like, you can't lose. It's a no lose deal. You know, it's a no lose deal. Everything you invest in yourself, nobody can ever take that away from you, Grant. Just remember that. Now, a lot of that, a lot of that she believed was the traditional schools and colleges. But that always stuck with me like that was true for me. Right. I knew that was true when she said it. Hey, if I if I read a book and I get one thing, one line out of that book. 
if, if somebody if somebody got this book and never opened it and said, be obsessed or be average, if that's all you ever got out of this book and just understood that, you know, nobody ever nobody can ever take that away from me. If you just get permission, you know, I remember the book Good to Great, you know. Oh, wow, man. Good to great. I, I don't want to be good. I want to be great. How do I make the transformation? I remember I got a book once. It was a. Uh, uh, how to build a, a real estate empire. Never read the book, dude. Never, ever read the book. I still have the book on my shelf. The title, the title encouraged me to build a real estate empire. Definitely. Uh, by the way, my real estate holdings are pro- exceed that guy's by about uh, 80 times. Wow. And I never read the book, dude. <laughs> so, so like that book was worth that book was worth four hundred million dollars to me. Yeah, exactly. And I never read it. Now I hear a lot of people say, "I don't finish the book. I don't like to read." I'm like, "Well, then just look at the cover, man. <laughs> Sleep with it. Hold it. Fondle it. Okay. <laughs> hey, you buy yourself anyway, man. Look, see, that's one of the reasons we put me on the on the engine. Yeah, was because we we are donating a bunch of books to schools. Uh, and in hopes that a 10th grader, when he's forced to go to the library, he might find this thing. OK, yep. and we know a 10th grader will pick it up. We've already done a test with millennials and, 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 and young kids. They freaking love the cover. They're like, awesome. dude, who's this dude, dude, sitting on a plane? <laughs> yeah, that's right? pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so first thing you got to do, man, is you got to create curiosity to 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 climb in somebody's head. You got to create some curiosity. Oh, perfect, man. That's a great answer. I I love that that you tested it with kids and they love the response. And uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do to help you this side of it uh, in Australia. You're trying to get it into schools as well. I'll uh, do my best and see what I can do for you. All right, beautiful. And if if people want to donate, if you want to buy a book and donate it to a school, let us know. Give us the name of the school. We'll figure it out how to get it to the school. We're happy to do that. All the proceeds from the sale of the book, all the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds from the sale of the book uh, go to uh, 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 Drug Free America and Drug Free World. So I'm donating all the money that I get from the sale of the book to two charities to stop the drug in the kids. Brilliant, man. That's awesome. So, Grant, I've got a bit of a random question I usually throw in for all of yeah. my guests. Um, it's something I've learned from solution-focused therapy, obviously going through counseling. It's called the miracle question. So imagine if you went to sleep tonight, and when you're asleep, you woke up tomorrow morning, and a miracle had occurred, and all of your dreams and everything you really wanted in your life had come true. What would that be? You can impact anything in the, in the world or change anything in the world. What would that be and why? Dude, every, every person on this planet would listen to me and, and trust me. Perfect. You sure, know, sure. that would be. I love it. Short if I was sharp. rubbing a genie, <laughs> if I was rubbing a genie, dude, they'd be like, hey, dude, I just want to listen to what Uncle G says. <laughs> I, I, I'd become everybody's uncle overnight. I'd become their brother. I'd become the, 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 the comrade, the friend, you know, the trusted. Because, you know, look, I have a message that hits people really hard. And 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 some people some people don't like it the the way I talk. I I, I don't have a I'm not trying to to win everybody over. I just know that what you're being told, what most people are being told every day. Like if I go to England and Australia, the first thing I think about in England and Australia is you guys are so nice. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're nice people, man. You're nice people. Oh, thanks, you know? man. That's yeah, and, and, yeah, but I don't know if it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, See, it could that, be taken both ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the problem. That, like, like you know. So you're, you're you're particularly Australia is in a place in the world, man, where you got pressure coming from so many different angles. Yep. That's good and bad, right? You've seen it be good for a while in your real estate. It was bad a decade ago. Yeah, definitely. So, so I think you know, I would if I could wake up tomorrow morning and have one thing changed is people would know my name. And then, then, then maybe I'll just change the second half of it. Leave it up to them whether they like me or trust me or not. Because I don't need everybody to. I just need the right, the right half to, to, to trust me. I think you're nearly there too, Uncle G. You've got a pretty big following. And uh, I remember someone, uh, the first time like I really got into your stuff and I saw someone tag your Uncle G. And I was like, that's cool. I like that. So, yeah, I yeah. think, I think you're, you're nearly there, man. Yeah, that came from uh, my, when my dad died when, at 10. I kept waiting for my uncles. I was telling a story one day. I kept waiting for my Uncle Jay, my Uncle Vincent, my Uncle Paul to show up in my life. Because I wanted a man, dude. 
you're 10 years old, 11, 12 years old. You want to go hunting. You want to go, you want to learn how to be a man, right? So, hey, when's the uncle's going to come around? When's my uncle going to come around? When's my dad going to come back? I mean, tr truly underneath all that was when's daddy coming back? Yeah. And then finally one day from 10 to about 13, one day I was 13 years old. I'm out mowing the grass. Remember it like it was yesterday. I can still smell the grass. I know exactly what I was wearing that day. And I'm like, dude, dad ain't coming back, bro. This ain't going to happen. And then it became, man, I sure wish I had a man in my life. You know, I wish I had a dad. And I kept waiting for the uncle. Well, by the time I was 16, I was like, the uncle ain't showing up. You know what I'm saying? And in all fairness to the uncles, man, they got their own life. They're busy, too. Now, now I know that. But then I was resentful. Yeah. And w I said to my mom when I was 16 years old, I said, one day I'm going to get rich. And when I do, I'm going to help a lot of people. What my mom didn't know was the secret under that was I I was making up for the uncle I didn't have. One day I was thinking I'm going to be an uncle to a lot of people. Yep, so so the uncle I never had. Right. Wow. So whatever, man. I don't know. That's I just want, hey, I want friends. I want friends all over the world, man. I want friends. You know, if you have friends all over the world, particularly friends that are positive, friends that are expansive, friends that are dreaming big, friends that want to do more. Uh, you got you got probably the, the 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 greatest riches in the world would be to have friends that are healthy, prosperous, flourishing, interested, reading, learning that are growing. What would you say would be three to five actionable bits of career advice that you'd give to my listeners that could really help them being really obsessed and going into a career they really love? You don't need to go into a career you love. Yeah, nope. You know. Dude, there's no career that you're going to love all the time. Yeah. You know, I, I hear people saying on, on uh, I, see, I hear a lot of people saying like, you need to find the thing you love. Okay, good. Go If you want to go find the thing you love, good. Okay. But I, it doesn't exist because you're going to hate it. At some point, you're going to hate some part of it. Yeah. You know, I, I got, I got the woman that I love. Okay. Sometimes I don't love her that much, man. Every <laughs> once in a while, I'm like, damn, I don't love you today. You know, <laughs> she didn't even do anything. Like, I got kids, man. I love my kids to death. Sometimes I don't love the kids. I'm like, damn, man, not now, yeah. right? That's so right. They're, they're, you, I, I was driving to work this morning. I called this buddy of mine. The, the CBS wants to do this project with me. And, and I said, hey, what's the deal with CBS? Da, da. And I told him, he's like, how you doing? I said, today, I would rather be working for someone else than working for myself. So look, man, this whole thing about, man, I got to love what I want. I, I, I'm only going to do the things I love. I heard a guy say that the other day. He only does the things he's good at. Yep. So you better learn how to do the stuff you don't like to do. And you yeah. better learn the to do the stuff you don't, you don't want to do. You know? And just because you're good at the foul shot, sooner, the whole game ain't foul shots. No, that's right. You got to take shots from other place. If you don't like to dribble, dude, and you got bad hamstrings and your feet go out, well, then you're not going to be able to finish the game. Exactly. So so I think my one my one piece of advice would be this. Grow up. Yep. Okay? Somebody, you know, people talk about past life, lives. I said, "Hey, if you were something in your past life, what would it be?" Oh, I was Jesus. I was mother <laughs> I was mother Teresa. I'm like, well, she just died. Dude. Okay, that is not even possible, okay? I was uh, Catherine of whatever, right? I was this person. I'm like, "Dude, who carried the urine?" <laughs> okay okay who 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 was the guy you know just paddling the boat yep. like right who took the dung who took in africa who picked up the elephant dung and made sure for the prisoners and got rid of it yep. like why is everybody caesar yeah somebody exactly. somebody some little boy blue Caesar. Like, why does no, nobody ever confess to like, yeah, I was the guy doing Caesar and got my head chopped off. Yeah, doing the shitty jobs. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, somebody, dude, somebody, somebody had to be the, the right. Some, the point is, you got it? So <laughs> the point is, the point is, somebody's got to do the dirty work. Exactly. And, and, and if you're obsessed with what you're doing, the purposes. If you got purposes that you're obsessed with, you don't mind, man. I don't mind doing that. Right? Yeah. So, 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 you know, I, I'll do anything for my kids, man. My kids, my little babies poop on themselves. And I'm like, dude, I don't even think about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, whatever. I don't like it. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Nah, 
No, nah, not me. Not not me. Not this time. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can, can relate to that yourself. one. I've got two kids as well. I've got a three-year-old and a 10-month-old as well. So, Yeah, there you go. I mean, my little girl sneezed on me the other day. Stuff went in my pupils, bro. <laughs> I mean, freaking mucus went into my eyeballs, right? And I'm like, damn, that's love. <laughs> because cause you know what I know? There's going to be a time when my daughter will not be sitting on my lap. Yeah. I won't be able to have her on my lap, right? So I'm obsessed with that moment, dude, because if I'm not obsessed with it, I lose it. I miss it, and I'll never be able to get it back again. The big giant lawsuit and the and the de- depositions and the terrible stuff going on, man, be obsessed with it. Yep. You know? But don't be consumed by it. That's brilliant. That's great advice there, Grant. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Grant, what would you say would be one of your biggest positive habits that you use uh, every day that's helped you achieve your success that you've got? And what would be your, your most detrimental one, or one that kind of hinders you or holds you back? Yeah, well, number one, I, sh- I try to show up every day. Yeah. That, that's kind of my number one go-to go- thing. Show up, just show up. Something will happen if you show up. Even if I don't want to show up, show up. And then the one that's probably, you know, probably hindered me the most is just not making time for to, to for self-improvement. OK. You know, not making time, making excuses. I don't have time. I can't get there. I can't. Every time I've ever gone and done something that was for me personally to improve myself, workshop, seminar, conference. OK, workout, whatever it is, anything that puts me in the direction of doing something for myself. I've never, ever regretted it. I've been to some bad ones, too. Yep. I was like, oh, that was terrible. <laughs> but you see, even when you go to something that appeared to be a waste of time, what that does, it clarifies, it solidifies and strengthens the things that, that, that you know are right. Yep. It's very important in life to miss a target. Right? Because then I can say, oh, that's a miss. Yep. That, 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 that's not true for me. Uh, you asked earlier, one of your first questions was about people I learn from. I have learned more from people I don't want to be like than people I have. I do want to be like. Yeah, that's a good speech. I, remember, I like that. Yeah, I remember there was a guy, I was 30 years old and I was working for this guy. And brilliant guy was a brilliant, brilliant dude. Just brilliant. Unbelievable public speaker. And uh, But the rest of his life was just falling apart. And also his business, the business that he had was what I call situational. It was always it always had problems in his business. It was it completely dependent upon him. And I was like, I'd always watch that guy and say, like, like, I love his genius. I don't want this other this other stuff. I'll never be that. Yep. So I shaped my career around what I saw I didn't want. It, it, that, that, that he had going on I think that's amazing advice guys and you should definitely have a listen to that again because Grant's just shared something incredible so focus on the things uh, uh, look at other people that you don't want to be like and, and revolve and focus your career around that things you don't want in your career or don't want in your life that's great yeah uh, so Grant um, what would you say would be a book or a resource the biggest thing that's really helped shape your life what's what's a tool book or resource that's really helped you in your life and helped you get to where you really need to be man so much I mean so much I've, I've been helped by so many people I mean I think everything's helped me you know is there one thing so, that's really stood out to you like or one person that's really stood out to you in your life well I've been I've been studying Scientology for 12 years yep. w- without a doubt Scientology has benefited me in in unbelievable, both in my personal life, my business life, making decisions, trusting myself, having more more confidence in myself. They they have technology there, not what you read at the tabloids, yep. not not what you hear see on TV. It's all garbage you see on TV. But 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 the technology that that I have learned there has given me such stability and expansion. And confidence in myself and my ability to expand, uh, that that has been just super, super beneficial to me. That's brilliant. That's, yeah, and I can imagine the benefits and, yeah, how the media portrays things and twists and turns and how they really want them things to, to portray. So, uh, yeah, that's great. 
Well, Grant, thank you so much for the uh, interview today. Um, is there any parting advice you'd really like to share with my audience that would really help them out with their career? Obviously, Dude. most of my audience is uh, professionals who are miserable in their job, uh, struggle to roll out of bed. So, yeah, anything you could share, your amazing experiences would be incredible. Dude, if, if, if you're rolling out of bed and, and, you know, rolling out of bed, feeling miserable about what you're doing is one thing. But if the rest of the day continues like that, because I roll, hey, I wake up sometimes and I'm like, all the way to work. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do this today. Yep. But something changes in the day. Definitely. So if you're, if, if that's continuing all day long, I'm going to tell you something. It isn't you. Yep. This is what I would tell you. There's somebody or somebody's bodies in your life that are making you miserable and that are getting you off track. So in this book, one of the things we talk about in this book that's really, really important, a billionaire told me this. He's like, look, I read your book, love the book. This is an important message for people. And it's not, he's like, what I love most about it, it's not just about you being obsessed, but you getting around people that are also obsessed. And how to distinguish between the obsessed and the average. I actually take the reader through an exercise and I'll be expanding on this in the coaching sessions. But it's about how do I start identifying the people in my life that love me that are now not good for me? And how do I help those people see where we both need to go so that we can both be, you know, wake up. And not be miserable all day long. Yeah, that's perfect. I, I can't wait to get your book. I've got it on uh, pre-order, so I'm excited to get it. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much again, Grant. I really Dude, appreciate Paul, your you're, time. You're, you're awesome, Paul. And look again, we push back the mastermind. We start on the 13th. I'll open it up. I guess that's on Thursday, the 13th. Yep. And then every Tuesday after that, we'll be doing a mastermind or a coaching session going over one chapter of the book. That's free for anybody that bought the book. Just send a receipt to me at Grant, uh, at obsessed at grantcardone.com. Send me a receipt where you bought the book, obsessed at grantcardone.com. The other thing I'll do for all your listeners, how many people you think will hear this? How many millions? No, millions. Uh, hopefully, millions. hopefully a few million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so for everybody that writes a review, in addition to me giving you the coaching session, if you write a review, Wherever you buy the book, whatever, just send me a receipt where you bought the book and the review that you wrote, and I'll give you a credit for the full amount that you spent at my store against any digital product. Wow. Guys, jump on board with that one. You couldn't get much sweeter than that. Grant's throwing some uh, absolute value so there. Basically, the, the, the book basically costs you nothing. Exactly. Yeah, definitely jump on board with that one. So it's grantcardone.com forward slash obsessed. And Grant, thank you so much. I absolutely love your content. You're such an inspiration to me. And as I said, you've changed my life in such a massive way. So I thank you so much, man. It'd be great, man. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Have a great day, man. Thanks a lot. Okay, Paul. Thank you. See you, man. Awesome dude. Awesome dude. Awesome dude. Guys, if you've loved what you heard in today's episode, don't forget to jump on board with Grant's amazing new book, Be Obsessed or Be Average. Grant has an incredible offer going alongside with this book, where if you send in the proof of receipt and proof of purchase from wherever you've bought it from to obsessed at grantcardone.com, he'll also give you an exclusive access to a 13-week coaching program, which is going to help you implement all of the learnings from this book and take it on board into your life. So guys, jump on the link below or contact Grant at obsessed at grantcardone.com. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I can't wait to share another episode with you next week.